I believe health is the greatest form of wealth we have, which is why I'm so excited to be partnered with Brother in Arms. Brother in Arms is a wellness brand dedicated to working with veterans, first responders, and anyone on the front line. Through their education, support, and premium CBD products, they help alleviate and restore the lives of those that have been affected by physical and mental trauma. Learn about the life-changing benefits and power of CBD. Join their community today. Hit the link below. I'm Sonia Morton Firth and you're tuned in to the Sonia Morton Firth Show. Today my guest is Harry Thomas, life coach, PT and qualified meditation instructor. Harry went viral after refusing to go into a quarantine hotel and spent the night in a cell instead. So I get to the desk, they said, um, have you got your quarantine hotel uh, paperwork? I said, no, I'm not doing anything. Yes, you are. No, no, I'm not doing it. Watch this interview as we talk about knowing your rights and standing in your truth to empower yourself and your family. It's not about me being right and you being wrong. It's what is right. Harry, it's so good to have you in my home. Welcome to Richmond. Thank you for having me. Harry, for my audience, can you tell me who you are and what you do now? Yeah, so my name's Harry, originally from London. I am a soul coach. I work with a wide range of clients. And now I think I've redefined what I do. I help people find their truths. And I help people understand and be clear on their truths and then be okay with it. I love that. That's so, and I'd like to go deeper down into that because that's such an important statement, finding your truth. Um, but look, you went viral uh, a few days ago, yeah. but before we get into that, can you tell me a little bit about your story and how you got to this point? Yes, uh, I always say it's a spiritual journey and it's a, a woo-woo word that people kind of frown upon, but it started, I'm from originally from the health and fitness industry. I set up a, a, a company called Number One Fitness 12 years ago. Um, we had two personal training studios in London. Started working with clients, but our approach to fitness was very different. It was holistic, looking at mindset, nutrition, sleep. So we covered everything. So we're working um, with people, improving their health. Then we got into the education. So we started delivering personal trainer courses and we helped people become personal trainers. So my whole line of work was working with clients and helping. Uh, at the same time, I thought business was quite easy at the time and I set up two side companies. Uh, got done terribly for fraud and one lost a lot of money. Then the other company, I just let the guy who was working for me uh, take over. He was then stealing from me and I, I, I found stress. Like I've always been a laid back guy and it hit me quite hard. I then started living the entrepreneur lifestyle at the weekends, going out, drinking, drugs, parties. So I was living two lives. I then had a period where I had a breakdown. I went on a friend's wedding. It was like a school reunion in Greece and I just broke down completely crying. I don't, don't know why I was crying. And it was like I was getting daggered with all this anxiety, all these different things that I was procrastinating with. And that was kind of the, the first turning point um, to my journey. So I come back, I got introduced to meditation. I loved it, but I was still living that second lifestyle where I was going out and partying hard. So at one point I'm, I'm living this health and fitness lifestyle. I'm encouraging people to be healthy, but then I was escaping and, and I think now hiding from all the stresses that I wasn't dealing with. So you're, because a lot of people would say, well, couldn't you sort of help yourself by your own measures of being health and fit and fit? And wasn't that enough for you to help with the stress of what was going on in your business? I think the, and that was the interesting thing, uh, what I thought health was, was just fitness and just nutrition. So I was a healthy person. But now you start looking at health, health like means so many different things, but my sleep wasn't good. I didn't have any time to myself, meditation, or I didn't do anything to get in flow. Like there's, there's loads of other components to health. So I think we live in a world where oh, we've got to go gym, we've got to eat well. And if we're not doing that, we're not healthy. 
but there's so much more we can do. So, What are the other things that you really took on board that helped you with your stress and helped you over that period? Uh, learning. Like I, I went on uh, self-development, I listened to one book, How to Be Fucking Awesome. That was the first book I listened to. But as the author, he was literally telling me, and it just made sense. And then after that, I just, every day, just listening to different books. And since then, I've, I've li- in three years, I've listened to one month and five days of just books. Wow. Just so personal development books? Personal development, which then led into spirituality. And then I, I call myself a student of life now. So li- literally, my, my life as a life coach, everything that happens in my life will then influence my life. So I, I, I have... Three intentions every day. How can I use this for my life coaching? How can I use this on stage? And how can I use this for my social media content? So literally whatever happens now, I'm like, oh, and I remember. Oh, I can teach it back to people. And it's like my whole outlook of... We, some t- at school, we get shown what to learn. We're not told how to learn it. Whereas now I know how to take that information on. And then my job is to help share information for others. That's amazing. And so how do you help others now? Uh, all, all sorts of way. I think it all ties back to the individual. And I think what we're going to go on to after, what's happening in the world at the moment, there's things on the TV, there's people that go into protests, there's people that are arguing about the vaccines. It's all out. Helping yourself starts from within. And we stress out and we, we search for happiness and we search for all these things, but they're all feelings within inside us. So my whole focus now is turn it back in on you. And then when you're noticing all these different feelings, it's you that's in control of it. So you know what feels right. You know what feels good. You know what doesn't feel right. So then when you go through life, if that doesn't feel right from that person, you know that now it's not right. So you cut it off. What happens if you ignore these feelings and just go with whatever you think your flow is? Um, well, I wouldn't even say the word, you can't, you can't be in flow if there's a resistance to it at all. So I think there's, we have this intuition. So we make these decisions or we stay in a relationship or we go with a narrative that we're told, but something inside us, it doesn't feel right. But we still go with it anyway. And then more and more now we're hearing and we're, we're, we're getting told, look, that's not right. But something's saying, no, don't trust that first. And I'm still good. Like, so I think it's being able to tap into your intuition, take everything out of it and say, what feels right to me? What happens if your intuition is wrong? It can't be. That's your ego. Your soul is truth. And the thing is that we got, if you think of ego, we've got our limiting beliefs, we've got what we've brought up from our parents, our values, our friends, the TV. We've got all these things telling you why you're wrong. But if you really went around each one of these things and said, what... What would you want? What is the, the thing that you would take? Don't worry about anything else. Your truth would come in. So your intuition is always right. And every bad decision you make is an egotistical one. And you're always like, I knew I should have made that decision. I knew it. I had that gut feeling. So it's almost trusting in your gut feeling. There's a knowing, but we don't... So this is the way I explain it. We live in our head too much. And we've got all these thoughts. And just think of it as like a thunderstorm. It's noisy. But because it's noisy, we don't hear our gut feeling, mm. our soul, our intuition. It's the same thing. Mm. So this is where meditation and, and mindfulness and doing things that you love, getting into flow, you clear the noise, and you actually hear what it is that you want. So I think that's the key bit is give yourself some time, 10 minutes, go and do something, go and write, go and paint, go and dance. The things that you love doing, lockdown stop that from us. And that's where the stress comes in. We live in our head, but not our feelings. I love this. Well, let's move on to the lockdown um, and what got you on the news in the last few days. And can I take you back to that moment when you decided to come back to the UK and what happened after that? Yeah, sure. So I'd been living out in Brazil for five months and my mum's worrying about me. So I was like, right, I'm going to come see my parents. Um, But coming back from a red list country on the government website and on the news and everything you're told, you need to do 10 days of quarantine. If not, you need to spend 10 days in a green country before you come back. Ideally, I don't want to be back for too long. So I want want to come back, see my parents, spend some time with my friends here and then go back again. So I didn't want to waste 10 days of of my life. And and also, if we just go back to COVID, I've never believed it from day one. 
I keep saying about finding your truth. I've been asking for questions and no one's given the answers to it. it 99.7% survival rate, the flu disappeared, there's no research on the vaccine, it's still experimental, the PCR tests don't work. These are all things that they're telling us. So I'm asking, okay, can you just show me one valid reason for me to worry about this COVID, but no one can do that. So my truth is, don't believe in COVID. So then coming back to the UK, I've, I've already made that commitment, I'm not going to be doing the 10 day quarantine. And at the point that you said, right, I'm not going to do the 10 day quarantine, um, did you think, oh God, I'm going to be, I'm breaking the law here, um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to get around this, or were you just planning to argue your case? I, I know. So there's a thing called common law, and this is kind of what all this has, has stemmed from. As human beings, we only have three things that we should be following. As a human entity, like a, um, do not disturb the peace, do not steal, and do not kill. So effectively, we just live a soulful life. I under, I get I get completely understand what you're saying, but we live well today. I, we you and I both are living in England or, or currently in England, um, and we abide by, by those laws, don't we? When we we live in this country, and weren't those, aren't those laws saying that you have to quarantine if you come in from a red country? Yeah, so that's that's the the trickery. We live in a deceptive world, especially in the UK. So we've got those three laws as a human. But when we're born, we also have this birth certificate and there's attachment to it where we're made as a corporation. So we're effectively two people on your birth. And the corporation is your name in capitals. It's a fictitious character which we're tricked into representing our whole life. So any act or regulation that comes in, these are rules set by a system that we don't have to agree to unless we verbally or contractually agree to it. So when this coronavirus act come in, that's not the law. It's, it's not the law. It's rules that they put in, but it's not the law. So if I don't agree to it, and also none of the uh, COVID has been able to be explained to me, and everyone's now starting to wake up to something's a bit fishy here. Like it doesn't, we've been locked down, we're wearing masks for, for what? And it seems to be there's an agenda for something else. So that, that, that no in that I don't, I'm not breaking the door was what I was then going with my lawful rights. I, I haven't done anything wrong at that point, and this regulation that I haven't agreed to, that's what I was going to challenge. So I, I, I come in with this knowing, but also confidence that I, I'd be able to get out of it just from, from my knowledge of what's going on at the moment. So what happened? Um, okay, so I, I got back to Brazil, to France. That was fine. France, they were a bit funny, made me feel in the passenger leg, hate to form. So these are all contracts, by the way. So the, the passenger locator form tried to trick you and say, yes, I have to do a quarantine um, COVID package. If you agree to that, you've already kind of said, this is what I'm doing, and they can, they can now hold you to it. So I put no to that, um, got back to the UK, and then that's where everything started happening. Just at that point where you put no, because I know you feel on these things in a plane, and I haven't travelled since COVID, so I don't know what, what the, you know, the, the new forms are. But even by putting no, isn't that going to be picked up by the people that you're travelling with or with immigration? Yeah. Do, well, do they make a fuss? For, yeah, so um, I, I guess each company and each uh, employee, they got to just they're going to get in trouble if they let me on and I haven't done what they've been told to say. So I had the feeling something to tick the box to yeah. say, right, you can go on. My job was just get back to the UK. Mm. Once I got back to the UK, I had it all mapped out. My whole 11-hour flight, it was like, what scenarios is going to be and how am I going to say it to them? And, and I knew the whole script as well of exactly what, how I'd respond to every rejection that they'd give me. And... Because I'm not breaking the law, and I ask them what law am I breaking, they can't answer it. So if I got my camera out, they're telling me that I've got to do something. And if anyone tells you you've got to do it, they've got to tell me why. So now I get my camera out, they have to admit on camera that they don't know why I've got to do it. So, so the form, you tick no, and then that, and that was fine. And no one sort of stopped you at that point and saying, well, you've got to tick the yes. It's like, no, I'm ticking no. And you, you got to the UK, <laughs> and then... Yeah, Please correct me if I'm wrong. You're there, and you're you're filming this episode, and they're telling you you can't film. 
So if you ever get pulled over by the police, you're allowed to get your phone out. Because in the olden days, it was their word against our word. So now you can get your phone out just to protect you, not, not to cause trouble, but just to record that information because things do get lost in the of moment. So, Were you not frightened, though, that they would snatch your phone? It's against the law. So they cannot, just so I'm it's totally assault. clear, they cannot grab your phone and stamp on it? No, that's it. That's just, it's assault. It's my property. I haven't done anything wrong. So it's like, it's like some... People get arrested for stealing phones. That's what effectively they would be doing if they did that to me. So, okay, so let's let's go back to this point because it's, it's fascinating. You're there, you're at immigration. What what happened? Who was called? Yeah, so it, it was funny. I, I was going to try to put my passport through the thing and just scan and walk through, but it flagged up and said no. And then what I also didn't realise that my bag had automatically gone to another terminal. They've got a special terminal for the COVID package hotels. So, oh, right. So they hadn't taken your bag because they thought you were, you know, a naughty person or you were going to cause trouble. They basically, you, your bag was taken because of quarantine, because mm -hmm. they thought you were going to a quarantine hotel. Yeah. So when I, when I got, so I prepared myself now, this is, this is what I've acted out in my head is all going to happen. So I get to the desk, they said, um, have you got your quarantine hotel uh, paperwork said no I'm not doing the thing yes you are no no I'm not doing it and, and again I don't need to argue it I just say one thing and I let them come back that's the this is the key thing with my coaching as well it's not about what I, my agenda I say my point my truth now you have to come back with it and then I, I, I'll counter it each time so then the supervisor went yes you are you're going to go to the thing I said no I'm not I haven't broken any law it's a COVID regulation act and I went what what law is that and he said, it's uh, the emergency law. And I went, well, can you show me what law it is? And obviously I knew he can't because it isn't the law. So he goes, that's a £5,000 fine for you out the way for refusing it. And again, I knew that all these fines were going to be thrown at me. And I said, oh, I won't be paying it. I don't agree to it. Um, and it went back and forth for a while. And in the end, I just got my camera out. And, and then you should see, he got a bit... Uh, frustrated and he's like you can't uh, film me and I said well you're not letting me into my own country so I'm gonna find out why what law am I broken he couldn't answer it on the thing he asked me to um, stop recording and at that point I said you're gonna have to get the police then so I'm just just going to, to summarize and I still want to know where your journey's gone because I think this is I think not not many people realize this because most of the people are listening to what they hear on the news and all coming from our government so you, there is no legal requirement to spend 10 days or other in a quarantine hotel when you come back from a red listed country. No. And you're well within your rights to say, I'm not going to go to the hotel and I'm not going to pay for a fine. So, because other people, some people would say, yeah. well, I don't want to pay a fine. Well, the, the, the question is, why would I go to the hotel? And most people say, because of the COVID, you protect yourself. Okay, if that is the case, the person I'm speaking to by internet, why aren't you going to the hotel? Every red list country, every day, you're taking a passport from someone that's coming from red list. You're, you're getting the virus every day with, so you're dangerous. The police that are dealing with these people, you're, how are you getting a pass, but I'm not? When I've lived a healthy life in Brazil, I've been eating mangoes every day, I've been swimming every day, like, I'm not a, a, a threat to the, the, the country, you are. So that's, that's kind of my logic behind it. If it's a dangerous virus, then we all should be isolated. But it can't be just one rule for one person because you've got a, a title and I haven't. And this is where, it, again, as humans, we're all on the same level. There's no status. But would they not say, to, just to play devil's advocate, well, I'm, I'm wearing a mask. I haven't just come from a plane from a red-listed country. But then uh, let's go back to the mask. There's no research at all. You can search it up the mask protects you from coronavirus. This, and this is, if we bring it all the way back to, again, the reasons for it, you can't find a justification, science, evidence. You can't. It's just someone who's told you, the people that control this, this country or the world that we live in. And that's, that's the thing. I always say, return back to source. Go to the, the reasons why we're doing it. Because if it's to protect us, I want to know why. Okay, I, that makes sense. I'll do the same. But they can't. And... Uh Look, many people would 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 agree. They they might be sitting here and saying, "Well, yes, it is good. Stand up for your rights." And then, 
There are others, and certainly, you know, I've been in the situation because I have, I have my own views, and I've, I've, I've had people say, but isn't that a selfish standpoint, a, a viewpoint? Because you may be okay because I'm fit and healthy and I choose to, to take my own choices about my health and my body, but that's okay for you. But what about, um, you know, grandma here that's 80 years old who unfortunately doesn't have a choice? Um, in being necessarily fit and healthy and her immune system may not be the same as your immune system. Mm -hmm. And then we go back to the stats that they give us. It's a 97.7%, uh, so let's flip it. You've got a 0.3% chance of dying if you've got COVID. That's the official stats. If we can't go through our life and we're worrying about a 03 chance of dying, what's the point of living? I, I've got more chance of getting hit by lightning than dying from COVID. Right. And That's the problem with COVID, some will then say, well, my friend died from COVID. Then my question is, how do you know you had COVID? We've just been given this title, and now the tests, they've actually recalled them. So, sorry, what did you say? They've recalled the tests? Recalled them. So the FDA, the, the overall and the CDC have announced that the PCR test, the tests that actually tell us that we have COVID and all the cases that I'm they don't work. They fail testing, emergency testing protocols. So Why are we still using them then? Because they're contracted to be until December 31st. So in December, and the reason why they failed is it, could, it couldn't determine the difference between the common cold and the flu, which surprisingly just disappeared in 2020. It was just gone. But the FDA have actually announced it. So on the 31st of December, there will be no more PCR tests. They're bringing in a new test. COVID will disappear by then because the flu will come back. And you're now seeing in some of these articles, oh, COVID's getting weaker. Soon it's going to just be like the normal cold. So COVID's irrelevant, but what is still there is the vaccine. Well, let me again say, well, what happens if people say, well, no, it's the vaccine that's eradicated um, COVID and, and brought it to the point where we no longer, you know, are, are in danger of it. So I'd say, can you show me some evidence that, that actually is happening? Again, there's not one bit of research, not one, and this is the thing that I would say to everyone, how many complications, side effects, deaths, how much negative stuff is being thrown at us from, from vaccines from lots of people now all over the place? I had someone who's took it, they've now passed away. How many positive things have we had from this vaccine? Like literally, how many said, I feel incredible, like my whole life's good now? Just weighing it up, there's a lot of negative stuff with this vaccine, it's still an emergency, it still hasn't been tested. It's not going to uh, even get to that until 2023. So this is unknown. It's, it's literally put out there as an emergency drug for a virus that also has a 0.3% chance of killing you. So it's like, I'd rather take the risk of just living my life. It's like 0.3 on any other, it's like a game of poker. You've got a 0.3 chance. Like you would take that bet. <laughs> Everyone would take, that's a cert. So I'd take that cert that I'm going to live in my immune system and if I'm not healthy, then that's my opportunity, then let's focus on my health. Let's or you at least want to be given the choice. Well, given the choice, yeah. And this is, to my job that. is, I call myself a sharer. I share information that people maybe not have access to. So again, my experience now. So now people do have a choice, which they didn't have before. And I think the biggest gift you can give someone in life is a choice. Going back to um, your experience, so the police did turn up. Yeah. What happened after that? Yeah, so, the, so the, the guy went away. I then had some time to prepare myself. I kind of had an idea what I was going to say. Are you acting under oath? And, and, but my friend happened to be on a common law course. So I quickly phoned him up and said, mate, I'm, I'm, the police are coming now. Can you put me in touch with someone? And he sent me back his teacher. I thought she was a lawyer. She, she wasn't even a lawyer. So she just said, look, when they come, all you need to say is three things. That's it. Write them down and remember them. And if you said these three things, you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything else. What are those three things? So, so the first thing, and, and it was, and again, this is where experiential knowledge, the way that she said it happened clockwork. So she said, the first thing you need to do, they're going to start talking. They're going to come in fear, stop them in their tracks and say, can you show me your warrant card, please? And give me your full name. And she said, they will say no straight away. They'll just dismiss it. They said no straight away. Then ask them again. They'll say no. And then ask them a third time. She said, if they don't give you their name by the third time, that is against the Police Act of 1996. That's a criminal offence. 
So a police officer can go to prison for six months for not identifying himself if you've asked him three times. Wow. So I could go up to a police officer, police officer on the street and ask them three times, and if by the third time they didn't tell me, you remind them of the 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 breach that they're in uh, with their police act, and they have to then identify. And you'll see the video that I posted after that. They gave me their their badge number and their surname, both of them like clockwork. Well, thanks for filming, buddy. Yeah, that's fine. So, can I have your warrant card, please? No, it's not in uniform. You have to show a warrant card. No, it's not in uniform. You can have my shoulder number. No, I've asked twice now. Can I see your warrant card? And the answer was no, twice. Okay, so. Your first name? Yeah, Fabian. Fabian. Yeah, 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 Fabian. Yeah,
To me, it's like the bullies in the play yard used to call you names, but there was no basis for that. It was just what they pretended they saw or what they immediately saw. That's it. That's ego. <laughs> that, yeah. That's all it is. And, and because what it does, it challenges what you think is right. And because you don't know the answer and there's like this panic at this point is, let me attack. And, and it's a human behavior that we don't just see in this and in, in, in a lot of things. So I just think it's, it's not about me being a conspiracy. I'm just trying to find the answers. I've got some questions, really simple questions. Not one person can show me the answer for Then I can't accept that as truth. Yeah. Harry, we were just uh, we were just talking about the common law and, and we went off track. So we, we, we talked about the first thing that you should do, which yep. is tell the policeman three times, can I have your name and warrant number? Yeah. And then and then remind them that they're in if they don't answer, they remind them in a breach of the police act of nineteen ninety six. And then the next phase is uh, ask them, are you acting under oath? So every policeman, when they first sign up, will have to sign an oath. And there's uh, an act called, which leads on to the third part, uh, the Criminal Justice Act. And this one I had the quote was of 2015. And it got a bit technical, section 26, subsection 3. And I reminded them of their oath uh, that they were breaking. So as long as I, I mentioned the first bit got their names, I mentioned, are you acting under oath? Every police officer will have to say yes. If they say no, then they're breaking their breach. That's a prison sentence as well. So it's kind of like the system's been put in for us. So you guys acting under oath? Let's get straight to the point, mate. Let's, uh, yeah. right, so what is the issue with you not the I've just asked, are you guys acting under oath? I don't, I'm not talking anymore. I'm asking uh, with my lawful rights, are you guys acting under oath? Yeah, I'm acting under my right now. Okay. So you are acting under oath, so uh, I don't even know why I even have to be doing this. So under, under, the, under the Criminal Act of Justice 2015, you can check it up, section 26, subsection 3, a constable is permitting an offence uh, if he or she exercises powers and privilege and improperly and if you know that you're acting improperly. What are you trying to stand me up for? I'm just looking at both. Don't come here to discuss it, I'll just leave now. I'll come here and ask you what is the issue with the quarantine. I just, uh, under my rights, I should not be uh, being kept in now. Well, you come from around this country, sir. 14 year sentence if you're not acting under oath. Right, you have to speak. I've given you the opportunity if you don't answer any questions, right? So, Harry, what happened next? So, it kind of got dismissed what I said. It went back and forward. But at that point, I knew that was all I needed to say. And I had my phone. I thought I was calm, but you can see that the papers are moving, but you could still hear it all and see bits of it. So, they kept saying, you're going to have to go to the hotel regardless. And eventually, they said, right, we're going to have to take you to the cell. And I said, OK, take me to the cell. So they put me in handcuffs and I was like, sir, can you get my suitcase for me? Please get that too. So walking through and you could see he felt bad. It's like, we didn't have to do this. Gets me in the van, on the way back to the van. And even at the, uh, the Heathrow Airport station, I had one last talk and he said, look, you're still going to have to go to the hotel. I said, no, I'll, I'll go in the cell. And when I was in the cell, they give you a piece of paper with your rights. You can spend 24 hours in a cell. It could be up 36, but that's the judge's decision. So I, in my head, 24 hours I was going to spend in here. I still weighed it up. 24 hours in a cell versus 10 days, £2,000, which I would call a prison cell anyway, because you're not allowed out apart from one hour a day. And So I weighed it all up, but I know I hadn't broken any laws at that point. So I'm, I'm meditating in the cell, just uh, <laughs> calming myself down in there. And the police officer would then come in and, and say, we're going to take you to the hotel still. I said, I'm not going. I'm staying in here until the judge comes. Then he can decide. And then I reminded him of his oath again. And I said, uh, you broke your oath. That's a 14-year prison sentence. And he was like, I didn't arrest you. It was the other person. And you could see he panicked. But he said it without thinking. And at that point, I knew I was, I was completely fine. 
Um, I then asked for my, uh, I thought lawyer at the time, I asked him, because I said, why am I in this cell? I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not a criminal. I shouldn't be in here. I should be maybe on the table. You should have given, they offered me food and stuff as well. But I shouldn't have been in there. I haven't done anything. So at that point, I'm getting a bit more, I want to speak to someone. They tried giving me a solicitor, but I refused to take them because they would have been trying not to convince them on their side. And the lady luckily then got on the call. She then gave the detention manager a bit of a rollicking, reminded them their rights again. And within 15 minutes after they put me back in the cell, the sergeant came and said, look, we're going to let you go without charge, but it's our duty to still take you to the hotel. So they're still trying to trick me into this point to go to the hotel. They're still saying that you've got to go to the hotel. Yeah, and what was funny is that they drove me to the hotel and he said, if you try escaping here, this is the police officer, we're going to slap a £10,000 on you. It's going to get really bad for you and you're going to go back in the cell again. And I'm laughing because what I realised is that on common law, it's me versus the individual. And if they've not done their rights, I can now claim compensation on them. So in my head, every hour that I was in there, I'm going to be invoicing them, <laughs> my fees. They dropped me off. I had my suitcase. I walked in. And again, don't sign anything. That's the only thing you need to do. Don't sign anything. Don't agree to anything. So I walked in and I said, I'm not signing anything. And the manager was like, you're fucking signing something. And I was like, what? This guy, the, and your security everywhere. You're signing something. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not signing anything. And he goes, you're going in, do you broke the law? And I said, I haven't broken any law. Again, what law am I broken? And that's the best question to ask anyone. What law am I breaking? Because they can't answer it. So they get faster. I'm going to call the police. I went, call the police. So I've literally just come from there. They're not going to do anything either. And at that point, I grabbed my bags. I walked out. Um, he was still reluctant to give me my passport. But I got my passport back in the end because that would be theft as well. Yeah. But he was still on the phone to the police, trying to chase me down the road. All I wanted to do was just get in a taxi and go home. Were you running at this point, trying to run away I was from about them? 250 metres in front, but he was literally... It was like Terminator, the film, where he just <laughs> wouldn't stop running after you. But in the end, I got a taxi and I, and, I, and I went home. And no one visited my house. And if anyone visited my house, they're not welcome. You don't identify yourself. Um, you don't have to admit who you are. That's another thing. People will say, the police will always say, can you give me your name and date of birth? You don't have to. So you say, am I obliged to answer that? And they have to say no. So again, cool. And that's the key thing. If you answer it, you've agreed to their verbal contract. Again, that goes into the legal system, not the lawful system. So people are watching this and want to learn more about common law. Where do they start? Well, the company that helped me, guardians300.com, they run courses all around the country, £20. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, it's in, in, and, and the best thing is, it's, it's not to let me go against the police or let me... Just what your rights are. I, I've got a, a platform called Lads Talk Health, and we did a really nice presentation. Again, just bringing it back to the foundations. But it's interesting. Like when we go back to how words were created, and the word politics, poly is people, ticks means blood sucking leeches. <laughs> so if you look at the words that this system have put in and the, the double meaning of it, you're like, wow. And again, you get this paperwork that comes in and says, um, uh, we summons you. It's not. It's like if you look at the, the real meaning to it, we invite you. Uh, you must means you may. When you sign your thing, this is a good one, your signature. Cross it off and pick autograph. Autograph is for me the entity. Signature is the system. It's all trickery. So we are being basically intimidated into our existence that we live at the moment. And you could argue through lockdown and through some of the government acts, it hasn't been much of a, an existence at the moment. Um, but knowing that it is intimidation and we all have our rights um, and starting with common law, which sounds like a great place, we can avoid these huge fines, quarantine hotels um, and I'm going to say police, this isn't against the police, but people trying to intimidate us mm -hmm. into doing something we believe is against our truth. One of my final questions, because um, I find this so interesting, I feel like we, we could talk for a long time, Harry, is how would you encourage people to really empower themselves to stand in their own truth? Yeah, so this is my truth, and I speak my truth. 
But you, I can't tell you what truth is. You need to go and experience it yourself. So the key bit, first of all, is that I've shared some information now, but it's your duty to go and research it. In life, we just want people to tell us, or like, I get a headache, I, here's an aspirin, this is going to do it. Or I need to find out what that does myself. Like, when I go and see a personal trainer, don't just take their word for it. Find out why it's doing it, and you'll get better results. So experience it all for yourself do your own research and enjoy it knowing that stay with you for the rest of your life fantastic harry we're gonna where can people find out more about you you mentioned your own podcast like uh lads uh, talk health mm -hmm. where else can we find out about you uh, instagram harry thomas coaching my um, website harry thomas and uh, my youtube channel harry thomas uk Harry, it's been amazing having you on my show. I think you're going to be a returning guest. Thank you so much for standing in your truth. Thank you for having me. Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, there's a new interview out every Monday. So hit subscribe and like, and you'll get it straight into your inbox.